My name is Tony Tauber. And I'm Nancy Tauber. Uh, I am uh, Sarah Chiu. The program's name is Basket Starfish, our language core. I have been here for a while, so those of you who have watched this might know a little bit. I will start with the normal uh, slides and uh, about what I'm going to talk about is a presentation of my uh, over 30 years of traveling experience. Out of that 20 years of that, I uh, concentrate on the searching for the uh, connection of all the ancient languages. And I came to the conclusion that uh, it is actually like a basket starfish because all languages are related. No language is isolated. And all we speak is a remnant of the original language. And so uh, you see on the screen, is the basket starfish that's the core right there and uh, only by looking at it like that we can uh, change you know uh, about the hierarchy that we look at people because we all share from one single I mean single core and as a female I present my view as a female and and from Asia and that would be a little bit different from the uh, scholar and Eurocentric view that you normally see okay and today because of uh, the new year I'm going to start with a slide uh, of a pig because this is the year of the pig and because uh, for the last few weeks I've been talking about the um, uh, the H form and H sound uh, as a rope so actually um, the pig itself has something to do with it too so I'm going to start it now Okay, this is the year of the pig. And the Chinese chronology, uh, uh, we, uh, when it's the pig, we actually call it hoi. And actually, uh, it's a representation of a female pig. And of course, you, in English, you have the hawk, but uh, the hawk already become the uh, male pig. And so you will see in today in the slides, you will see that how a lot of the female word or female worship actually transfer to the male side. And first of all, uh, this is a word that we write uh, as a ch as pig. And I want you to look at this part, which is the determinative for us to know that it is something to do with the pig. And um, this thing is that uh, the through the thousands of years it has actually developed into different forms and the form uh, the sound again uh, i base on cantonese which is a southern ancient dialect i'm not based it on mandarin because mandarin is a little bit mutated in another sense so you will see that uh, by following the cantonese sound you actually found a lot of common roots uh common core i should correct myself okay um the hoi the pig right there, there is the end of the 12th earth stem uh, what is the earth stem? Because the Chinese use a sky stem and also earth stem to, uh, together. And then like the Mayan uh, calendar, we churn out 60 different uh, combination of years. And then every 60 year uh, is a big cycle. So uh, number 12, uh, the Hoi, is the last of the earth stem. And it is also the last word in the first Chinese dictionary ever compiled. It was compiled in the first century uh, and um, and then uh, in this dictionary there was about you know 10,000 character why I write uh, 9,400 plus 1,100 because the scholar said and the, uh, the other 1,100 is repeated words but as far as I can see some of them might be some of them actually might not be just repeated some of them actually were there meaning different a subtly different thing so I write it out like that but anyway uh, out of the explanation of that 10,000 word they use more than a hundred thousand words and um, this uh, eight words are actually ending the whole uh, long dictionary it says something very strange it says hoi gave birth and then we start from one and one is actually the beginning of the dictionary so actually the uh, 
the dictionary itself is like a cycle, like a circle. When you look at this word there, and then you make a big circle and back to the beginning of the dictionary one, okay? So you will see that the ancient has a different spatial in their head. And um, this is the uh, thing that I want you to pay attention to. Actually, a lot of different writing system, whenever you see this hanging down thing, or when it turns upside down, whichever way, this three prong thing, it has a lot to do with life, it has a lot to do with also the dangling thread and a lot of the time it actually carries the H sound and also a lot to do with thread too. So the hoi um, in the earth system, you know, the hoi is the last number and then the first number will be represented by this symbol. By this, uh, the pig actually give birth to little babies as you will see that, you know, the pigs are uh, actually known for fertility. So, uh, and uh, but now be before I let you see the fertility side that the ancient worship, you have to pay attention to the same time that the turn of the uh, first millennial and uh, I mean um, the, the zero year and uh, when the Chinese were using this hoi to, uh, as the last um, word and you will see that the Greek also have the as khatos. The heart, this cross right there is also the symbol of meaning the end of time. So uh, that's why Jesus appeared at that time. So you will see that the whole world was actually uh, waiting for a big change at the end of time, just like when we were waiting for uh, end of time at the uh, 2000 years. So this hoi and, and, and heart sound actually uh, existed uh, very, very strongly at those times. Of course, from that word, you have the eschatology and the study of the end of time. and. And before I go on, I want to correct myself. Last week I presented this uh, slide and I was telling uh, you uh, the similarity between the sound like ancient Hebrew when they call Ayin is this little hole and fountain and spring. And in Chinese somehow, you know, in the uh, southwest part, actually last week because I spoke so fast that I said northwest of China. This is actually southwest part of China when they worship a stone called Ayan Gate. And then in Cantonese, we will read it as Ayin. Ayin, you will see that both Ayin and Ayin actually have the same sound. And it also both, you know, uh, basically subtly refer to the vulva, to the darkness and the female part and uh, female private part. And you will see that at that time you already you know the, the female is being hidden uh, as a secret and it's being a little bit verified. Okay after I correct myself from the geographic position in China I will go on with my slide and um, this week I'm going to talk about the cover-up that thousands of years was used to hide or transfer the female power in the human society to turn the world into a patriarchal hierarchical world that we live in today. Uh, what uh, is so important about it is the obsession of a, the male uh, following a pure male lineage. At the beginning, it was just the female lineage. So they actually transferred the whole thing to the male lineage. And so you will see that, you know, exactly because of they want to follow the male lineage, they want to believe themselves as a family tree. But then you will believe that it is, uh, I will go back up. Um, okay, um, they will be uh, keep saying that there's a family tree. Actually, uh, every single so-called family tree is should be just look at as a branch. This right big core is actually the female core right there. So about fertility. So you will see that the pig was being vilified, you know, uh, uh, since the very beginning because of their fertility. But uh, interesting enough also because of the fertility is being worshipped. You will see in China, you know, in the, in the north uh, eastern part of China, there's a lot of um, archaeological um, evidences that uh, shows that they were worshipping some pig-like thing. And then uh, this is also a statue from Malta, uh, temples built 10,000 years ago. And then you will see that all these big, big women were all, were all worshipped. And I want you to pay attention to the width of this the hip itself again pay attention to the word hip is to also start with the H word okay um, because the uh, at the same time when they really fry the 
pig, and then they also verify the female capability, which is to give birth, you know, which the male cannot. And um, you will see that um, I will work it backward, okay? Uh, a lot of you would know the Vitruvian man of Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, you, will, you were told again and again that is the perfect measurement, and then there are two men in different position, one uh, is uh, encircled by a circle and the other one is a square. But for a Chinese uh, pair of eyes, you know, uh, since ancient time we always say that the sky is round, is round the earth is square. So for us it's all, always a dual world represented by a male and a female. So I can um, guess that uh, actually beneath this male, it's a, actually this is the female measurement as you can see from this measurement right there. This is the measurement of the hip. And I will, uh, I will challenge you that to look at it this way because uh, this is a very ancient tradition of worshipping that part of the body. Um, this is uh, an artifact you can see in the Metropolitan Art uh, of Museum of Art in New York. And this is a libation dish. It's made, you know, uh, from uh, in this point. And you will see that the uh, bow has two legs, you know, uh, subtly it refers to the womb of a female. And this is a very ancient Chinese word. And it actually pun, um, can you see that this bow right there also have this pair of legs and then we uh, for us it is uh, f even more than 3,000 years ago it is an official unit of measurement and for the ancient uh, dictionary that we have that's compiled in the first century it actually uh, tried to conceal you know what exactly this measurement was and it just said that it is the measurement of the forearm of a female and you will know that you know if you put your forearm you know I right across your your uh, your worm your your hip there mostly you know um, they are they will measure the same this is how we normally measure the female hip you know with with the four arms length so uh, and interestingly you know the sound of this word actually pun with child right there and this is already 3,000 years old and if you if you don't look at this part don't don't look at the east you can look at the Arab world and this is a, a thing that I found in the dictionary that uh, this followed, you know, still follow in the Arab world. When I lived in the Arab world, that uh, I I I know I live with them and then I see a lot of people uh, a female when they were together privately they were always you know tied a uh, tape you know around their hip and start shaking their their hip and there is a long long tradition of it as you can read from from this it says that uh, she overcame the women of the world by of the whole world by means of the string what is this string is relates to a woman who measure around his hinder part with a string and then threw it to the women of the tribe that they might not uh, do with it the like, but they found it to be much exceeding their measure. So uh, it tells you that if you have a big hip, it's actually, you know, uh, being uh, revered. And then uh, people like women with big hip because they are supposed to be a sign of fertility. You can give birth to a lot of baby. Okay, talking about that string, you know, this has to do with a lot of the earliest technology. And as you can see, this hang or hair, which is the material, or also the hemp is also part of the material to weave and to trail into this all kinds of different material thread. And this is the earliest technology that human being uh, invented. And with this technology, we actually invented into tons of our human civilization. And I will show you the Sumerian writing and then this is a hieroglyph the, uh, uh, this is actually has a s sound which I will show you later but this already beginning with the H sound her and this is proto -Sinitic. and I will take that away and I will show you that if you, you depends on how you use a rope the rope can link or the, also the rope can bar you can actually see this is also roughly in an H shape too right so uh, the ancient Hebrew also have the H and the Phoenician and all the way to Greek they hold this but this time you know they become to believe that they mix it with the very light 
airy H sound which I talked about two weeks ago and then the um, the H, the heavy H actually they use this to represent because this is a twisting sign of the trailing the thread and uh, from the Chinese you will see that the Hai is actually right there so you will see that uh, from the east and the west they actually have very very uh, subtly uh, with the similarity and the Chinese actually have also this part of the H also hold in our writing system. You will see that we use this to mean to tie up some bodies, to subdue someone. And then um, the other one, if we use this, uh, the, the rounder rope, then we uh, we maintain the hai sang, hai or hai, that also to explain your possession or anything belong to you as far as slaves, you know, because slaves are supposed to belong to you. And then, and here is a very interesting thing that will begin that you will see that the sound actually link very close together in the western system and and as you can see the uh, the the rope that links down in chinese we actually say it as yan in cantonese okay i will read it in cantonese but the the the, the scholars insisted to spell it as j a n but actually you have to say it as yan okay yan it means the air or uh, actually the legitimate heir, okay, and descendant and offspring, those who dangling from this uh, umbilical cord, actually. And then uh, this yan actually rhyme with this yan. This yan is actually very easy for you to understand. It shows pregnancy right there. And then um, I will bring you to a Greek word, yenna, or yenna. Yenna actually uh, be, uh, means uh, everything to do with birth itself, but then why the English pronounce this is gen, gen, Genesis? It's actually through the Sanskrit reading. The Sanskrit actually have the same word pronounce it as Jenna, uh, related to birth. And then I will show you one very interesting Chinese word. This is a very interesting word that become monopolized by the first emperor of China more than 2000 years ago and um, this uh, the reading has, has actually lost or they didn't want to write it down in the dictionary in the dictionary it we know that is being monopolized by the by the emperor saying uh, he will say this is I and how he want to express his uh, as I is that he is the receiver of the divine lineage you can see that very clearly he's the receiver of the line but he doesn't even want other people to know how it's read so it it was not written down in the dictionary so now the sound is actually lost but we borrow some other sound whenever we see this word you will see it later but um, back to the sound H you know you will see that you know uh, we have the rope right there and then um, this actually has two reading actually uh, either you read it as hang or hang or you read it as yan again it it has and um, you will see different writing one has actually that bow right there and i can guarantee you that they they have different meanings subtly and then uh, one of the meaning is to begin to start or to promote which means to propagate to produce to produce many many okay and that has a lot to do with fertility but you can see that it's also raising the threat itself and then the other meaning is actually very close to the uh, western meaning you can look at it as hang right there as we we say hang you can say hang and it's actually means to haste or hoy something and why is this H so important because it really has a lot to do with the invention of ropes itself you will I will show you an 18th century British ship right there the model you will understand that the dominator of the maker of the ropes you know it can actually dominate the whole world it is not just the the, the, the umbilical cord that carry on tons of um, uh, descendants it's also if you can manipulate the rope you can actually go around colonizing the whole world i think the british actually was the first to go around you know getting all kinds of the hem jute all kinds of material they can build different kinds of uh, rope for different kinds of purposes that's why they can uh, manipulate the wind to go as far as they want that's how they started to manipulate the whole control the whole world so you will see that this subtle in uh, link 
between uh, a real rope in the real world and a, a subtle rope as an umbilical cord is also linked to the H sound and the H form, okay? And once again, I will show you this Hubble. In hieroglyph, they have tons of H uh, symbol and I will just show you four right there. Other than the rope itself, this is actually known to belong to the other and then the uh, something to do with the birth itself, you know, the uterus itself. And you will understand it as the uh, umbilical cord and then they will use it uh, to represent the tent. Of course, the tent is also whoever is in your bloodline live in the same tent and also, of course, to do directly with textile itself. And then I will show you one more, you know, because of the rope itself, you also use it to tie the same whole herd. This is a picture I took in Tunisia when in the animal market, when they tied all the animals together. Together. This is what you consider a whole herd with Hubble, okay? And the Chinese actually have the same pronounce as Hai. It also means lineage, but I want to show you again something you know, you see in Cambridge every single day. It is the walking rope that you tie all the little children together when you take them out to walk. And this is barely, you know, like a little herd that you, you herd down uh, the street itself. The Chinese also have all this. I'll show you, of course, this Hoi already and you will see this uh, also showing the rope part right there and I have already shown you the Greek the eschato the, the, the last part because the last part is what is going to follow sometimes it can also mean your descendant and but I want to show you uh, one ancient Greek word eho eho is actually means the God's blood that's how the ancient got the idea of following this whole uh, that's following the bloodline of the god and as i told you last week you know the hero actually why it starts with an h because it it's uh descendant from the god it is the descendant holder of the of the bloodline of the god okay so south arabic have all this represent different h sound and then uh, the Gus, which is in Ethiopia this day, you will see that roughly they still follow the same shape, just flip them one way or the other. They all are holders of H sound. And this is Arabic. They also have different H sound. And this one, I will give you this example, which echoes far away, you know, to the ancient Egyptian of uh, the rope itself. And then they have this, which they always use it to mean uh, hubble, which is a a rope actually harp in Chinese in Cantonese also means a rope so I actually use the same sound to understand all these languages and this is uh, height itself and it means thread or string and again in high in Cantonese also means a string or also the lineage itself and Hebrew actually sums them down to two H sound and one is the lighter H the other is the heavier H as I said you know your writing of the uh, uh, small h actually came from the Hebrew uh, cursive writing. The big h you came from the ancient Hebrew, the rope itself. So every single thing you can actually still find the uh, the the um, descendant. Okay. And I will show you again the herd. This, uh, the herd is, means the descendant from the same mother. Okay? And then um, this is also a picture I took in Tunisia when they were selling this. And last week I already roughly told you about Rehal, um, the very important matriarch in the Jewish line. And, and they believe that it means you. Uh, of course, you know, you is the key matriarch because they understand it, you know, as the animal itself. And that's how you got rid Rachel, the English pronunciation is different. This is actually Rachel. You know, if you pronounce it in Hebrew, it should be an H heavy H guttural H sound. And then I want you to prove that because Noah, uh, you call him Noah, is also carrying this very important thread right there because he's the new seminal father of a human. After God killed off every single one, every single human that comes down from there is related to Noah, which is linked to God. The thread is also linked to God. You can see that thread appear again and again. Of course, I already show you why Sarah and Abraham all of a sudden got an H inserted inside their name and again this is a noun in Hebrew 
uh, Naha. Naha is to guide, to lead, because in the ancient time, always you guide the, the animal with a leading rope. And I will show you a Chinese word. This is uh, again with the sound hin. Hin, can you see this rope uh, actually leading um, the, the nose of a horned animal? And this is hin for us, it means to control, to lead, to drag, to pull. And of course, when you have control, you can hurt the animal along, you can move forward or you can hold the animal. You can hold the animal, you can stop the animal. So that's why you see even in English word, you constantly see this visual symbol right there. They are not there, you know, randomly. They were there, they were built into the word long, long time ago. And then this is, uh, again, I will show you this. This is the uh, monopolized, you know, I word from the ancient em Chinese emperor. This is he who, who said, you know, he's the holder, the acceptor of this thread itself. From then on, no one can use this word to represent I in the whole China up till this very day. Okay, so this uh, shows his divine lineage. You have to understand at the same time when Jesus Christ, you know, on the other side, you know, also says that he is, is uh, linked to God himself. So, you will see the e ho, and then uh, the sound is ho. You 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 get it, and then you see the x itself right there. That's why the Christ is so important. That's why Jesus has has to have the uh, the the title of Christ because it actually directly linked to the God Himself. Okay, so uh, I show you some very diehard tradition, and um, this is a small island in the middle of the uh, Arabian Sea, and the at the Gulf of Aden right there uh, between uh, Africa and between uh, Yemen and also between uh, India and in this little island right there Socotra I see these things uh, I was living with some uh, animal uh, farm uh, herder and then this is how they start to cut the hair of the animal the first year they tie them there and then from the first year they never untie this knot and then they will let the hair grow and grow that's how they know the age of the little animal and you will see that even from the last century you will see the child still carry that like that and if I show you this picture you will see that the ancient Egypt still count their year like that without the year counting that's how they know how old the child or how old the animal is so you will see how humble these people are and they actually raise their kids like a little kid okay so I actually have a lot more slides but this week I think I am going to stop here thanks a lot